What's up guys, HBox here with a kind of fun topic. I was looking back and thinking about all the tournaments that I've entered over the course of my Melee career, and I wanted to sort of share what I thought were like the top five most uh, bizarre moments in my competing career. Obviously when it comes to Smash Bros tournaments, it's more than just like show up, play your match, report the match, go to the TO with breaks in between. Uh, in a tournament, there's so many variables as to things that can happen just because of the way life is, um, that it sort of creates a very sort of unexpected uh, circumstance or outcome depending on what might happen. So let's kick it off. We're gonna get right back to the video, but first I wanted to give a quick shout out to our sponsor for this video, Ridge Wallet. With the Ridge Wallet, this thing can fit anywhere and almost not be noticeable at all and it really you know pushes forward the point that you should only care on what you need the fact that it's so small it's so thin obviously you know smartphones over time got a lot smaller so why haven't our wallets right and bridge wallet is the first one to really do that and i'm sure my cat brisket uh would agree as he's gonna sit right there behind and i own now this ridge wallet for about a month and i gotta say i love this darn thing but a few points about this wall that I want you to remember, this thing can hold up to 12 cards. It comes in over 30 different colors and styles. If you want to get carbon fiber like me, that's the one I chose. Uh, it comes with a lifetime guarantee, 45 day full refund policy. And you can get 10% off your Ridge wallet today with, you guessed it, ridge.com slash hungrybox for 10% off your Ridge wallet order. From yours truly, of course. So. With that being said, uh, the link's in the description. Let's get back to the video and stay hungry. I'll see you guys. So kicking things off in my bizarre moments in competing in melee tournaments list, my honorable mention has to go to Smash and Splash 3, uh, which would be winner's finals versus Armada. And quick backstory is basically Armada and I have always had a very long rivalry in melee. We both play a very defensive style, which means our sets usually go the full distance. And in this case, uh, it was no surprise that we had a game five set, you know, down to the wire last stock on Dreamland. And Smash and Splash 3 was one of the biggest melee majors at the time. And so uh, when we were playing it out this time, um, he had basically had a big winning streak in like five majors before this one. When Armada and I win against each other, we get these long streaks. I don't know why. It's like we had this like mental damage on each other's heads. And so that's just one of the ways it was. And this was the turning point for me. So this was actually one of the first sets that I had won against him in a while. And uh, my reaction, of course, to beating him was unsurprisingly, uh, you know, as you might expect. Seven. Went to game five, Dreamland. I got an amazing up at the rest. Holy cow, holy cow, that yeah. was winner's finals. Yes. Oh my god, he's gonna break the TV. <laughs> so I... <laughs> when I win tournaments, sometimes the Hulk comes out. Because I'm putting it out all there on the line. You know, we got Crunch right over here. He was coaching me, you know, through the whole week before to beat Armada specifically. And he's happy that I won, I'm happy. I, I might have caused some property damage, not gonna lie. Also, my pay if I need to. Pop off box. All right. Yeah. You know what this Let me show you this. Ready? So pop off again. All right. Me. The boys. Can you see my foot down there? This is me cracking open a cold one with the boys. I understand. I decide for some dumb fucking reason, because I have so much pent up emotion in me, to kick the nearest object next to me. Like, I'm a refined soccer player, which I'm not. I didn't even make the middle school team in soccer. Fun fact, Crunch did, and I didn't. I'm not bitter, Never mind. That was a story from 15 years ago. But anyways, so I kick the chair out of excitement with the camera delayed behind me. This is me with no regret. This is me after regret. And once I do... Why right now? Yeah, I mean, it's he like has he was I go into wincing pain. Crunch is laughing his ass oh, off. Okay, dude. He has enough. And then I have so much adrenaline that I can't even fucking feel it. And it turns out, after the fact of the tournament, I go to the doctors. I had burst like three or four blood vessels inside my foot. 
And there's let's <laughs> go as usual. Anyways, that's my honorable mention because uh, yeah, don't don't kick things after your wins. All right. But yes, I actually had to wear a cast. <laughs> I had to wear a cast on my foot uh, for like the next like few weeks after. And I think there was actually even a picture that <laughs> that mango caught of me and Crunch at the airport with Crunch carrying me around in a wheelchair because I really couldn't fucking walk after that. So that was really dumb. All right, that was all I mentioned. Okay. All right, number five, uh, we have EGLX 2018 Frozen Grand Finals. All right, now obviously this video clip might have been shown in a lot of other videos. You know, I don't get, really keep track of that. I'm just wanting to, tell, I guess, tell my own experience here, but. I'll go without saying, first of all, that EGLX and especially like Gommel, anything that the Gommel boys like Joe and Max, anything they run is easily like my favorite tournament of the year. And I fucking love their series. And so this moment right here was unfortunate because it was something that was out of their control, out of our control, out of basically everyone's control. But long story short, during this tournament, um, it had been running a little bit later than expected, I guess. So the whole crowd was here. Me and Plup were here in grand finals. He's in losers, I'm in winners. We gotta play with another set. Um, and the, basically, the venue itself had a dispute with one of the vendors. And imagine over here to the side, I believe it was on this side where my mouse is, past that, right? There's a huge door that opens up, which is letting in all that beautiful, frigid, uh, Toronto Air. And mind you, this was uploaded in March 13th, so take that as you will. <laughs> Look at the dislike ratio. <laughs> uh, you could you could always tell when I won a melee tournament because there's at least 10% dislikes, but this is much more. This is because of the circumstance, so I'll show you. Um, and the reason this was bizarre to us is because the whole time warming up, the whole time warming up, we're here just trying to keep our fingers warm. And every time we do a movement, it's like, not enough. I'm shaking my head because I'm just like, the door is open. I can't play, right? And Plep is there too. And it, like, even the commentators can feel the cold. I'm here like rubbing my hands together, keeping my hoodie on, like doing one of these. So rubbing our hands together and mind you, I'm playing Puff here and Plep is playing Fox. And if you're not familiar with Melee, Fox takes a lot more input to top level than Puff does. Puff takes inputs, but the, 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 the inputs from Fox are a lot more like, they're more, a lot more frequent, and so there's a lot more room for error there. Um, and so Plup's playing Fox here, and anyways, we play the first match, and it kind of, uh, Plup is making some really uncharacteristic, like he's, he's like, he's staying still. And even there, rubbing my hands together. Plup was making some mistakes that he never does. Like he would, he would just run up to me and just like stay still. And like as a top player, you can tell immediately when there's something outside the game affecting it. So the the frozen grand finals right here. I mean, it kind of goes the way you think. Plup actually ends up, you know, sort of pulling it together. Take he takes um, Plup pulls it together and actually takes a pretty solid game two against me and Pokemon. He up throws me. I no way, no way I'm hitting that SDI when it's that cold. Anyways, we go to game three and it results in nothing, almost a four stock. You can see that, like the frustration on Plup's face, a bit of confusion on my face too. Like right there, he was standing still. He, Plup would never do that. All right, yeah, just. And then somehow I make this back. And so it's just it's just a a, 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 a a tournament full of bizarre circumstances. In between games, we're just like we're angry and just not feeling it. I'm rubbing my hands. Plup is frustrated. We go to game four and. I got another grab too, another pound. Go for a little follow up here. Anyways, uh, the whole set, I have momentum, not because I'm like playing great, but because Plup is just playing so un uncharacteristically and making a lot of mistakes because of the cold air. Um, anyways, it, it goes down. Even, even I'm, I, I'm literally on tournament point here and I'm like shaking my head, like watch. Jab reset. I'm shaking my head because I want a good set. Anyways, I get a few more combos on him and then Plup decides to um, finish this up. SD on purpose. No one's happy. That's the least happy I've ever seen two players, a crowd, over a win. Oh, 
Like, I don't even do, like, my victory thing that much. I just, like, yeah. I'm ready to get my plane get home. And again, that wasn't the fault to anyone, but it was unfortunate there was a dispute between a vendor who wanted to get their stuff out of the convention center, because EGLX was a convention, and he wouldn't listen to us and said, hey, can you keep it closed for, like, another, like, 20 minutes? And they were, like, getting into, like, almost like a verbal altercation out there. It was super unfortunate, but, um, yeah. So number four on the list is the EVO 2017 food poisoning run. Um, a lot of people aren't sure because, uh, you know, a, a lot of other things happened in that tournament, which made the tournament just crazy in general. But the entire time on Saturday, uh, we had, Melee was pushed to Saturday for, uh, for the whole day, right? Melee, Melee did not have this on this line in 2017, like we did in 2016. Uh, and I was like the returning champion. So they basically said, yeah, Saturday, Friday's your pools and Saturday, you're playing from 10 a.m. to like 10 p.m. It's a 12 hour marathon of melee against the best players in the world. And so Friday night after I make pools, I go out, you know, kind of partying a little bit with my, with my friends, my ex, we, we all go out, you know, drinking and one of the after parties I was there because I evil those a lot. We, we get like one of those like uh, booths together where there's like, you know, people, uh, people serving us like, you know, food and alcohol and all those sorts of things. We're, we're, we're just like, we're, we're, we're enjoying our time in Vegas, you know? And once, once we're there, it's like, because of that, um, we ended up just like, not, uh, really caring. And all I remember is the next day I woke up and I was just feeling like absolute, like garbage, like not just regular garbage. I mean, I felt like there was like an atomic bomb in my stomach. And I think Illiquid actually did a, uh, documentary on this tournament called Hungerbox Fighting Evo 2017. And I have like a screen grab from there. <laughs> This was like me like two hours after waking up. It was just so bad in so many ways. Um, and even like Crunch was concerned. Like we were all just like half dying. And I remember um, I had to fight against like S-Fat and a bunch of other people. And between sets, between sets, I was walking over to a trash can and just hurling. I mean, I was throwing up more than I ever have. I think I lost like 11 pounds that tournament. I don't know if it was food poisoning from, from some bad OJ I drank that before, or the food, or maybe I caught a virus or something, but it was, I was deathly sick, dude. I remember at one point I had to take off my lanyard because there was, ugh, okay, anyways, it, it got, it got, it got really bad, all right? So I'm playing against Cobalt here. I'm playing against Cobalt here and it's wild. And then I get, I get like some clutch wins. Like that's a game three set and I'm still able to clutch it, you know? And um, I don't know, it, it's 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 pretty nuts, right? And so we're, we're going through it and it gets really bad. Anyway, um, I will say like, then I, um, I played against S-Fat and again, I, right before I played S-Fat, I threw up again uh, in the in the garbage can. And because of that, like, you know, I was, I was trying to feel better again, but there was a whole other drama to this set where I talked to a TO and the TO behind me said that, um, that coaching was legal for this set. There was a guy with a clipboard like right here. I forget what his name was, but I'm like, hey, does this qualify for the coaching for the rules for pools or whatever? He said, yeah, this is fine. This still counts. Um, there was a rule this tournament where coaching was legal for one part of the tournament, I think it was pools, and not legal for the other part bracket. So there was some ambiguity as to what this was considered. Because on one bracket online, it said this was a bracket pool, but there was another bracket where it said this was actually main bracket. And because of that ambiguity, um, the assistant CEO of the clipboard, literally right behind me, you can't see him in this frame, told me that this was uh, the, one of the sets that counted as a coaching legal set. So Crunch did coach me during this set after I won a match. And then everyone said, no, that wasn't legal. And then I was almost DQ'd from EVO as a whole, um, which was unfortunate, but all in all, it was a massive understanding, a massive misunderstanding and super unfortunate. So I was already like throwing up mid sets. I was stressed out by almost being DQ'd. Um, I managed to clutch out some crazy win here, uh, which is nuts. Yeah. I'm sweating my ass off here. Anyways, uh, this whole tournament's nuts, and I ended up like somehow making it all the way to um, to the finals against Mango, and Mango ends up, uh, or I make I make it to I make it to I think winner semis versus Mango in top eight. Yeah, so Mango beats me and loses there, and again. 
they didn't capture this, but I, 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 I go back off stage, I throw up again, I make it back to Losers Finals, and I actually push this set the full distance versus Manga. I even got some really good edge guards here. And we push the game five here. Horrible. I love how Crunch there, as soon as I hit that, he's like, don't do that. I told you what the fuck. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> dude, I must be the hardest player in the world to coach, dude. Anyways. And I, I take my walk off stage. What people... What people didn't realize was that this was the hardest run of my life. This was... People people will say like, oh, like Evo 2016, you had this big, amazing lose bracket run. This was legitimately the hardest bracket I've ever played in my life. Because it's so difficult to be always going against the crowd, but then also having a freaking food stomach virus throwing up everything. You saw how skinny I was in that video? I wasn't that skinny before the weekend started, I'll tell you that much. But I'm still, when people ask me like what, what my most, what I thought my most impressive run was, that's in like my top three. Because there's no way playing 12 hours a million a day with, with food poisoning is by any means a, a feat. And the fact that I won so many Game 3 last talks versus, versus Fox players like Cobol, Sfat, brought Mango to Game 5, almost had my rematch against Armada and Grants. It was just a nutty experience, so, yeah. Um, Alright, so, speaking of being sick during a tournament, my number three most bizarre uh, experience was a tournament called Nudes Nudes Nudes, sponsored by, I believe it was Cup Noodle. It was a Melee Edition tourney um, in SoCal, and they were running an event for, I think, like, five grand or something, and um, I woke up to go to the event to fly out because, you know, it was a... Uh, it was a it seemed like a good event. It was cool. They wanted me to come out and also like take pictures of the event and do content for them and all that. And they could want me to go. So I go there. I wake up and Crunch and I are flying together to the event. Crunch is my coach, as you know. Uh, so we're flying to the event and uh, I wake up and I'm re I realize like all my muscles are stiff. All my muscles on my arm are stiff in my legs too. And I'm like shivering a little bit. I'm like I wonder what that's about. So I wake up. I get some coffee. I'm still feeling really really weird. And so Crunch comes over, my mom drops us off at the airport, and we're just like, kind of like, something here is off. And then we're walking into the airport, and I'm like, dude, I think I have the fucking flu. He's like, what? I'm like, yeah, I think I'm actually like super duper sick. And we're like feeling it out, and but it's like, I couldn't tell whether or not like it was like the flu, or I just woke up on the wrong side of the bed or something. And we thought to be safe, let's let's get some masks or whatever. So I, I bought some masks, you know, to, to keep the flu with me and not anyone else. Um, and we took a five-hour flight over direct from Orlando to SoCal to Los Angeles. And a five-hour bumpy flight with what I had was one of the most shitty, difficult experiences ever. If you're a frequent flyer, flying is tough after a long time. Uh, it, it's it's just like, and when you're we're sick on top of that, it's really really bad. Anyways. We get to Los Angeles. I'm I'm like just coughing and just lethargic and sweaty and rocking back and forth. It's it's the full blown flu. It's the full blown flu. And I'm just there in the hotel. And Crunch is like, "Look, we're already here. Like, what do you want? You, do you want to stay in the hotel and not compete?" And I said, "I don't know. I don't know what I want to do." So he goes, bring us like some dinner. I didn't even eat my dinner. So um, I'm just like there, like drinking like 14 bottles of water in the hotel, trying to like stay with it. I wake up the next morning. We go to the tournament, um, they're selling like cup noodles there and all that. And um, I end up fighting against uh, a lot of people in bracket. And the whole time before my bracket starts, I'm just like, do I even want to play this tournament? Am I even gonna, is it even worth it for me to compete when I'm not at my full level? And I end up competing and I end up winning a game, then winning a game, then winning a game. Um, and then I end up like just playing a run that's akin to the runs I usually do. I even play against like, 
uh, Captain Face roll, who ends up SDing one of his games, and then I end up winning that set. And the next thing I know, I'm playing against SFAT in Winners Finals, and I end up beating him in Winners Finals, um, all while wearing a mask, all while like ultra sweaty, just like you know, I I, I was I was barely like keeping it together, and it was just uh, it was really tough. And I think like once once you start playing in the bracket, like as soon as you play one, you get your shakiness off. The next game is a little easier. Then it's a li little easier after that. Then a little easier after that. And so the whole time you're just like hoping and praying that you can just keep on winning and like motivate yourself. Anyways, like we ended up playing last game, I think on like FD. This is like winner's finals. More of a campy style. But then like Hbox adjusted to the like better. Yeah. Better. The three stock. <laughs> So I'm able to do it still and, and, and win winners finals. Uh, and then it goes to grand finals. And at this point, I am just like physically exhausted. I'm physically exhausted. I wanted to be over. I've been playing all day, you know. I, 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 I want this to be over. The score right now is 2 2. It's game five. If I lose this game, it's gonna be a reset, and I think I'm not gonna have enough, enough energy. He goes for an up smash, get a forward air. Side base on the ledge. Out of relief, I pop off. That was a bizarre experience as well, uh, because I was like trying to stay hydrated the whole time. Note to self, I would say to everyone, if you're, not, if you're feeling under the weather, the weather don't compete, especially now in the era of COVID, uh, especially now, you know, back then, Having the flu, you know, like people, it happened, people did that. Um, I was like trying my best to keep it to myself and wear the mask and Pete. But looking back now, with especially with everything given on, I think it's like definitely a lot more responsible to not go to an event if you have anything that's contagious, whether it's the flu, even a common cold, whatever it is. And now with COVID, don't go to a fucking event. Don't go to any events at all until the shit's over. Um, so, yeah, looking back. I won the event, and I'm glad, but I think it would have just been better. I, I didn't hear anyone else getting sick from that event, but looking back, it would have been safer to just, like, not do that. Um, but still, Michael Jordan had a flu game, and now I had a flu game, too. <laughs> it's it's kind of cool to think about a little bit. <laughs> anyway, all right. Number two, the Genesis 4 broken finger. Uh, Genesis 4, before I was playing in that tournament, I was playing, I ran a dodgeball league in Orlando, Florida. It got really huge too. We had meets of like 40, 50, 60 people came out. Um, and we were playing, you know, dodgeball within like a racquetball court, right? So we used the court rectangle as our dodgeball square. That's just kind of what we did. So it was really like close up, fast paced, intense dodgeball. And so because of that, um, we just continuously uh, played. We had a lot of fun. I was playing too. It was a great workout. You know, I was getting my my summer body in um and this was like december november right before genesis 4 maybe october and we're playing and jabaley alex jabaley comes to one of our meets and we do a game like it's like the third game of the night and we're all playing i think uh he's on the opposing team i'm on one team now i don't know if it was him i'm pretty sure it wasn't but we like to pretend it was because no one really remembers but i remember a ball came at me and i tried to block the ball with my own ball you can do that in dodgeball. You can use like ball for defense. And my finger, I sometimes grip my controller like this and I hold my finger up like that or do like this. And I think I was doing the same thing with the ball. And so the ball, if you can imagine, the camera is the ball and the camera is you flying towards my finger. This happens. And my finger to this day has a little bump on it. I don't know if you can see. A little bump next to my nail. The finger has a little bump on it, right there, from the dodgeball injury that I have. Anyways, um, so because of that, um, my finger broke. I, I could not put any pressure down my finger. I could not click Z, my most important button, because I grab and L cancel with Z, and uh, that is huge. So not having Z was a disaster for me, and anyways, went to the doctor. The doctor, he, he even posted up this whole picture that I put on Twitter of, of my broken finger and did I decide to not attend Genesis? I said no because I'm a freaking try hard. I actually ended up shifting my play style. So before I would kind of play like this, you know, I would like play this style with my finger here and mash the button there 
And instead, I used my Z with my middle finger. And I started playing with my middle finger to do both and used my ring finger to wave dash. And let my, ring, my, my index finger sort of stay here and not do nothing. And that took like a full month of melee rehab. I had to like play against so many people. So Genesis 4 ended up seeing me lower because my finger was broken and I didn't think I would play to my expectation. So they ended up putting me up against Mango in winner's quarters. I lose to Mango and then I make it all the way back to lose to semis to play Mango again in top four and, and top eight. And when I play against Mango, you might notice my finger has a little bandage right there. It does, because that was my reminder of my finger. That was a doctor's brace to not put strain on it and to let it heal. And so that's what I was doing. So I was literally playing Dennis with a broken finger. Um, and what's amazing is <laughs> it got to a situation like this. This is game one. I back throw Mango. And I was so close to being able to say that I four stock Mango with a broken finger. Do you imagine the flex? I would have, I, I could have grilled Mango on that for the rest of my life. But instead of me clutching it out, I think it got to my head and he ends up uh, reverse four stalking me. And then it all fell apart. Anyways, it goes to the end there. Could you imagine though? But can't quite finish it. And there it is. <laughs> Could you imagine if I did that? And he up smashes me or something. Or he calls me out with like a up air up smash. Yeah. And I'm here bummed out. I'm like, damn it, I almost did that. But anyways, I, again, it's sometimes like there's a challenge and an obstacle put in front of you, and you you want to win anyway. So yeah, if you're gonna play a turn with a broken finger, you might as well give it your all. You, you might as well go down swinging. I bet. Um, but um. I think that would have been like my most like prized win I think ever if I <laughs> if I pulled that off. Uh, anyways, so yeah, broken figure tournament. Uh, got fourth place there. Still a lot better than than like anything else that could have happened I guess. So even if your finger is broken and you, you learn how to replay with a new style, you never know. You might almost force stuff maybe. So yeah. Um. So that was my number two most bizarre moment. Um. And number my number one most bizarre moment. This should come to no surprise to anyone. But um. And of course, as we all know, that object that you saw lunged at me from a distance was a raw crustacean. A full ass crab lunged at me. This is after I won grand finals over Mango with a huge uh, reset uh, with a crazy run in losers. I had to beat Zane. I had to beat Plup. I had to beat a lot of people. And it was actually an extremely impressive run given the circumstances. And to congratulate me, someone thought it would be a good idea to throw a crab. I was, hey! I was a little bit angry. Hey! Who the fuck threw this? <laughs> Who threw this at me? Oh, fuck off, dude. Oh, fuck you. Oh, Why would you throw something? Right in my fucking face. I, I might have swung. <laughs> My blood was boiling right now, dude. I, I I had never felt that angry in my life. You know how hard I worked on here? Nice box. I was upset. I was pissed, dude. And there it is, the emblem of the crab. Which at this point, if you watched any of the documentaries, any of the stories about mailing the past few years, you've seen this oh, this photo, you've seen this image, and in any case. And, you know, the, the crowd tried to cheer me up and all that. Um, but uh, that was definitely a turning point, I think, for everyone in the community. I think we all realized something in that moment. 
that there always are going to be fandoms and opposing factions. Because in any sport, that's what works. You want, you know, rivalry is an important thing. Having intense love for your player and wanting to win, like Mango, is one thing. But having intense hate for another player is actually toxic and not what Smash is stand for. And I think that moment sort of amplified that a lot. This got posted on God knows how many outlets of esports, how many videos it got posted on. It started a whole discussion on safety in tournaments. But at the end of the day, looking back at it now in 2020, in August, um, I will say easily, this was the most bizarre thing that's ever happened to me at a tournament, having any object lunge at me after a grand finals win, let alone a crab, uh, which was which was had a hard shell by the way, had spikes on it too, had like the whole claw. Uh, if he had, if the guy hadn't had such shit aim, he might have taken out my eye. Um, but I will say that um, in a way, I'm happy it happened because it it, it really was like a, this big realization for a lot of people. And so, uh, note to myself and note to others: if someone wins a tournament, don't throw shit at them. If you are upset that they won, don't jeer at them. Just go to the guy who lost. Hug him and say do better next time. Cheer as loudly as you can for the guy you love. But yeah, that was uh, definitely the most bizarre moment that's ever happened to me. Um, and let me know what other content you want to see from my channel. I know I have a lot of stories of Melee, a lot of stuff that I've experienced in my life in these tournaments, a lot of opinions on the game, both in Melee and Ultimate. And as usual, guys, if you're enjoying the video, make sure to click the like and subscribe button with a little bell. I'm only saying that because it's not automatic. But only do so if you really want to watch my videos. I know a lot, a lot of YouTubers say, oh, don't forget to like and subscribe. But I'm saying it, if you only really want to watch my videos and you're enjoying the content, then do it. If you're not enjoying it that much, don't do it. I'm not going to force you to. All right. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed my strange anecdotes in the world of Smash. And yeah, I will see you all next time.